violence, I'm in pain, I just lost another friend. Stop the violence, it's the same like the war will never end. Stop the violence, no one gains when you kill another man. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Stop the violence, I'm in pain, I just lost another friend. Stop the violence, it's the same like the war will never end. Stop the violence, no one gains when you kill another man. Hello Turks and Caicos, my name is Shivago Jolly and welcome to You Think Up. I'm sitting here today with a very impressive cast of Turks and Caicos Islands young men. I'm going to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, first, we have Jeffrey Nicholas, Captain Rice Williams, and Moses Carter. So we'll start with Jeffrey. Hello, Jeffrey. Hey, my name is Jeffrey Nicholas, and I was born in Providence Islands. I'm an entrepreneur and a volunteer. All right. Hey, what's up, world? Carlton Williams here, better known as Captain Rice. I'm from South Caicos, the island known as HB. Boat captain, formerly employed at Caribbean Cruising, tourism field, and so on. Afternoon, Turks and Caicos. My name is Moses Carter, owner of Prolific Contracting, Prolific Creations, Prolific Photography. I'm here to just give you guys a little insight on what's going on in the country. So the theme for today's episode is gang violence in the Turks and Caicos Islands. So we have a very diverse cast and we're gonna give each person an opportunity to talk about not only their experience in terms of gang violence, but how we hope to change the impression on our youth in this country and the direction we're going with in terms of why people feel the need that, or even the fact that this is a necessity. So just to kick things off, we're gonna jump right into it. I'd like to start with Jeffrey. So Jeffrey, just a quick question. I mean, in your opinion as a young Turks and Caicos Islander, why do you think young men are even thinking of joining a gang or why being in a gang is an option? I think for me, I got both perspectives. I think I grew up in five kids, right? Born and raised, so I understand what it's like to want to be tough, right? And to want to fit in and to not have anything to do, right? And when you have a lot of time on your hand, you try to find things to do, especially at a young age. Hmm. And I think after I finished school 2010, I realized like there was this big shift. The shift was we used to play a lot of basketball, mm -hmm. but then I happened and the court got messed up. Mm -hmm. so everybody was on the court. But after I messed the court up, mm -hmm. everybody was just sitting on and then everybody got into idleness. Idleness, right? So long time we'd be on the court until 12. Right? We'd get in trouble for being on at the court. night? Yeah. At, until twelve at night. Curfew. You know, you playing ball, you yeah, play, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, tired, yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. time to go do other stuff. Yeah. And even though we had an argument, I would see you the next day. So we couldn't really have a problem. Problem. You understand? Yeah. After that it got divided. Right? So whoever lived up the road stayed up the road. Whoever lived down the road stayed down the road. Mm. And then I realized like people really had issues with each other, like you couldn't go down the road if you live up the road, you know, but then up the road and down the road always used to meet on the court, because the yeah. court is central, the yeah. court is right opposite yeah. of any caper. I know where it is. You know, so for me, how I escaped it was, I had mentors and I had, um, I started to read. So my mentor took me out of there. I saw a different perspective, mm -hmm. right? I was one of the baddest, mm -hmm. I, you know, and I'm not bragging, I, yeah. I was bad yeah. in school, yeah. you know, but that's what I knew was good. So I could understand why the young people now feel like that what they're doing is good. They mm. want to be the bad and they bragging about it mm. because that's all they know. Okay, and when sure. that's all you know, that's all you'll do and you'll do it to the best of your ability. But it's a, it's a facade, it's not real. No. There's nothing that comes out of it but that or jail, mm -hmm. you know? And bills. It, and bills. Boy, and some of the people bills. who are the baddest, there's n nothing to show. No. You know? But you have to work on the mind, you know? And whether we want to believe it or not, there's two kind of mentors. There's good mentors. And bad and mentors. bad mentors. But the bad mentors are more available. <laughs> mm. That's true. Readily accessible. Absolutely. You got more time when your hands yeah. are doing bad things. Yeah. So you, you talked about mentorship, and that's an excellent point. So Captain Rice, you've been um, quite an outspoken character 
for quite some time, but garnering more attention lately in terms of some of your posts on social media and some of the things that you want to talk about, social issues. So we've interviewed you on, um, on, several, on another program, and you talked about how there are influential people that kind of redirected your life, how you could have gone on a different path. So Jeffrey mentioned how mentors had a positive impact on him. Can you tell us a little bit about the individuals that kind of pointed you in the right direction that able to make you the man you are today? Right on. Um, as Jeffrey was saying before, you know, as far as being in a gang, mm -hmm. you know, it is like a mind thing. Mm -hmm. And one thing we got to understand is uh, a lot of these youngsters, you know, their mind's still growing. Mm -hmm. Some of them ain't reach towards maturity as yet. Now, for me, you know, I wasn't no different, you know, growing up. You know, hothead, don't want to listen to my mommy, don't want to listen to my daddy, just didn't care. But then, um, along the way, we would have, like, who I could say? I had a few school teachers along the way, you know, a few community people along the way, you know, and they would, like, give you their life story or tell you why you need to straighten up and uh, why it's important to always, you know, keep reaching and straight ahead. Um, being in a gang, I can tell you, it ain't, like, he wouldn't realize this until it's, it's too late. There's an old saying, everybody got to really reach their bottom before they can really, you know, look up and try to climb their way to the top. Right. And you see, sometimes most people don't really reach their bottom until they reach around the ages of 35 going into 40 or in the age of 30 going up. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these youngsters between the age bracket are 30 and going under, some of them still in the life and nowhere close to their bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, but for me, when I look at the road I was on, because trust me, I had police attention, courts, bills, lawyers, and it's almost like I didn't even have a real life, mm -hmm. you know? It's was like trying, almost like fighting for air at one point, you know? Trouble everywhere you go, fights, all of that. It didn't take me long to realize, like, you know, that's, that's the life you really want, or, or what, you, this is how you want to shame your parents, or, or, you know, you got so much full potential, you got, you, you, if you could be, Anything in this world, I mean, this is what you want to be? You know, like the guilt uh -huh. trip that is, that is playing on you a it's lot. It's a guilt mm -hmm. trip. It, 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 it does. And, you know, I, I live with a lot of that in me for a lot of wrongdoing, you know? And one day you just wake up one morning and adjust, like, you know, I hate time to make a change. Like, even in terms of some of my posts you mentioned, like, sometimes most people believe it don't even be me. And sometimes I don't even feel like, 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 like that's me, you know? It's <laughs> coming from somebody of authority, somebody of some rank or something, but it's the good that's in me that's trying to overpower the bad, you know? Even if I can't help somebody today, but at least it's a message I could send or some kind of word I could share that could be able to lift somebody up. Facts. You know, and um, we all want the best for us. You know, we all want to keep reaching and keep growing. But one thing I understand in our society is there's this thing called TLC, the tender love and care. A lot wasn't brought up with it. Mm. A lot didn't grow with it. A lot struggle, struggling, still trying to find it. You lack it, eh? Some of these kids grew up with their parents. Mm -hmm. You know, father, mother by their side. Some people introduced to violence, drugs, you know, all these things at a very young age. Mm -hmm. So when that kind of prey on your mind, growing up, you as an individual still trying to learn Sometimes these negativity is all you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but just because you come from the ghetto mm -hmm. or come from a bad situation, don't mean there's not some room to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always some room to grow. But it is a mind thing, and some people just got to wake up and see what the, the, the great wonders, what life has to offer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in one of the best countries in the world. Facts. You know, Only you can wake up one day and say, listen, you know, I ain't got no money, but then guess what? Opportunities right before your doorway. You could, you could rent somebody's car, make some jitney money, you know? Mm -hmm. Go on the beach, book some Paris here. Today. Banana boat in Cuba, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't even have to get a permit to do these things as an islander. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of these things will get me in a better position, because that's how I started. Mm -hmm. I ain't had the best grades in school. I didn't, wasn't the best student. And as I said to you on your show before, hey, I graduate <laughs> in the B Street. Mm -hmm. Went to high school in the B Street and graduated. Ride from, it out. B you know, Street. Anybody know me back then? Believe me, I was amongst the rudest. Yeah. But 
I had real good parents. One of them ain't today right now. God rest his soul. Mm. But I got kids of my own now. You know, and if I could save them from all this madness and all this mayhem by becoming better, mm. then that's the least I could do. I feel like I owe it to them and I owe it to the world. It's powerful. It's powerful. So, I, based on what I'm hearing from from Jeffrey in terms of mentorship and and how important it is in Captain Rice and talk about the direction, it's like you guys are basically describing uh, Moses. Like yeah. you've told us about losing your parents early and mm -hmm. and how you had to kind of uh, just find mentorship in the community. I'm going to give you an opportunity to tell yeah, us about sure. how you were able to turn just a situation that started off sad, basically, and turn yeah. into a prolific like, <laughs> business platform, right? Straight up. Um, myself, I would consider my life to be a strategic one. Um, my foundation is from my parents, particularly my mom. And just a while ago, we were speaking about like, what do we think is make the young boys take the directions that they take? I could irrefutably say it's delinquency. So I would urge like fathers to like stay in their sons' lives or stay in their children's lives because this is like a key element. In today's society, we have where it's like the norm where people make babies and they separate, but they don't know mm -hmm. what this separation does for the generation 10 years from now. This mm -hmm. one separation today, it contributes to 10 years from now, eight years from now, when this child grows up with a delinquent mindset. And this happened to me, but through intellect, through mentorship, like he said earlier, I like I had I had positive meals in my life when I was just coming up. Alonzo Garland, I could say like was a near to pair of mine who used to oversee me as if I was his son, not as if I was his friend, right? So aspects like that and being involved in a decent family. So I had the privilege of being involved in other people's families. And this is what could show me like now the balance of what is make a young male feel complete. Things like that is what makes me know like if you're a young male and you don't got this type of balance in your life of family structure, delinquency has to follow. That's number one. If you don't have a father figure, to guide you when you make mistakes, because when you're delinquent or when you're young, you will make mistakes. You will make repeated mistakes. And in your mind, you're thinking the world coming down hard on you, but the reality is this just is life. But you need somebody who like telling you that this is life and just endure a little longer, things can get right. So it's my, it's my belief that all young men need to just be steadfast, be vigilant, if you have a father figure in your life, pay attention if he's positive. If you have a mentor figure in your life, pay attention if he's positive. If you have a female, because it's my opinion that my mommy is the realest N-I-G-G in the world. But if it's positive, you pay attention. And I think like all my paying attention in my adolescent years is my benefit to date. We live in a society where you would get pre-conceived based off your last name alone. These people don't know you. They don't know you from a can of paint. Why they don't know you? They never speak to you in their life. So we're in a society where young men need to be mindful of how they're perceived as well. So if you go in a room and you know beyond a reasonable doubt, these people anticipating that you be the, the denominating value in this room tonight. You're supposed to work extra hard. This extra hard ain't even for you. This for like your legacy. That's why at now I work extra hard for my legacy. I don't do, I can't put it in words, but I don't do anything that was for a bad boy to do. 
and there's no money in it, there's no value in it, there's no real friends in it, there's only losses. So if we had a message for any young man out there, don't put your, your, your energy and time in anything that's fake, anything that has no substance, anything that has no value, anything that's gonna cost you losses, anything that's gonna cost you family. If you know this gonna cost you, don't do it. It's, 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 it's straightforward. There's no way to sugarcoat it, there's no way around it if you know it's gonna cost you. Even trust. Be careful who you trust. Because it, it, any young male now, your trust should be in progression. Not even friends. Because friends is what costs on a lot of young guys their life right now. So call friends. Yeah, so I'll say progression alone, man. And I know the price of progression. <laughs> the price of progression. Speaking. It is cause people you don't know hate you. Seriously. Yeah, I can see you speaking from the heart. Um, yeah, man. And I appreciate that. I think one thing that I'm hearing that's ringing with, with the entire panel here, except Jeffrey, who's still waiting to do something for his country. He's talking about like fatherhood, right? I'm still waiting on you, buddy. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to hear not, from everyone, obviously, but like the importance of, of how being a parent and the impact that had on you, because I know for me, my whole life has changed since I became a father. Like, it, it wasn't even as if I had a choice in some of the things I used to do <laughs> until I was responsible for someone else, another life. Like, I knew every decision I made would have a direct impact on, on this, this child. My first child was a daughter, and, and Moses talked about 10 years down the line, like, yeah. I don't want anybody raising my kids. Like, if I'm in prison, that's, that, my child automatically becomes someone else's responsibility, and she might be raised by the community. And it's not the same community as when, well, I know when I was growing not up, even it, it's different. Like, they just leave. We ignore young people so much now, and it's such a risk. So, so and I'd love to hear Jeffrey's opinion on it as well, but, like, where, one, where are we falling down as a community in terms of our impact on how young people are raised, but also as a parent, how has this impacted how you make decisions? I'll, I'll jump in. Go for it, buddy. I think being a father doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a child. Like for me, I don't. my father that really grew me up is one of my mentors. Yeah. He was a tourist that came here. That's where I got my definition of family, so I could really and feel what you're saying. No. Because at home, my dad left when I was like 10. Mm. You know, so for me, even how I act and I say y'all, that's y'all is from North Carolina. That's who I was growing up around. And Country. Where my definition of family comes from. So, and also I had younger brothers. I had two twin brothers that I didn't want to follow the bad things that I used to do. You know, and only way I could tell them not to do this is if I didn't do this. You know, so they forced me to grow up and to be the man of the house, right? And whatever my father, who was a tourist, who came down and told me, and the only reason I called him my father because he loved me. Yeah. Right? So he didn't say it, he showed it. Like, he showed up to me when I needed him, I had dinner with them. They gave us uniforms. They didn't have to do these things, you know. But love is not, I love you. It's a feeling. You know, it's a feeling. It's, it's shown. You, know, you don't have to say it, you know. So, to me, that changed my life. And he gave me two advice. He said, you know, and this is not for everybody. Don't get married too early and don't have kids too early, right? And that's why I am able to do what I do today. Yeah. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. I work for myself, right? If I had kids, I couldn't do that. Yeah. I couldn't leave a good paying job to go take a risk on a business. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I had to think about the child, but no. the blessing was I only had to think about myself at the moment. 
So I was able to take those kind of risks. I used to think I was a hustler until I had my first son. That's when mm -hmm. I went into overdrive. I used mm -hmm. to think I could chase money. I used to spend money them mm -hmm. days. My son is what make me like zero tolerance towards whatever it is I have to do business-wise. My first son, that's when I had him. And so when I approached business, it was on some relentless position. I gotta get it. I just gotta get it. Gotta get I just it. gotta make sure that I could maintain my position in his life whenever the time come. And there's be times we can fall short of that. We can fall short of that more than once, but these times is reminders of why we gotta push more. And I understand your, your logic is completely relevant of not having kids early. That would work for people. But I've also seen people who've had kids early run above and beyond on, on some, we gotta survive and provide energy. You know what I mean? And Rice, we come from like the same background of <laughs> urban areas. We know, I, I, I watch my mommy feed five kids herself. Five. So when I think about me with one, I look at it like easy. I got two sons now, mm -hmm. but I still just be like, man, these times ain't like the times before. Mm -hmm. and providing is a little bit easier. So now the core thing is not about providing. The core thing is making sure that your kids got the right type of values because the world is where values handed out free, but all the values ain't good values. It's all over the internet, all kind of values, negative, destructive, also positive. But we don't get to decide which ones our kids see if we ain't around them all day when they're on these devices and stuff. So we gotta, we have to plant these values in them so that when they do see, they know what decision to make. And, and that's where I be at with my son. Like, there be instances I gotta talk to my son. My son is so articulate. I gotta talk to him like one of my peers. That's how smart I feel he is. And I gotta ask him questions to, to receive certain answers, to know how to go about I, the way that I deal with him. I feel like our nation is a lot like that. If they wanna know which is the best direction for us to take as a nation, we, we should be viewed as delinquents. Or, and we's a baby nation. So come and find out from us what's a resolve or what's an angle or what do we see as resolution. Mm -hmm. Don't just make decisions without, you know, getting collecting the data. And, and that's where we at. We, we, we in a time of information. Mm -hmm. Changes can come from what information we have. Mm -hmm. And the information is there for free. So mm -hmm. what do we do? We can be sitting up and waiting for some change to happen or we can just gather the information and pursue change. That's good. So like, like, like parenting, there's many methods to that. I would say go make babies right now, you're at that <laughs> age. You just say you, you, you're successful or you in the entrepreneur energy where you could, you you could provide. That's yeah. how you say it, you know, you could provide. More than one way to skin a cat. Yeah, right? man. Yeah, yeah, we it's, all got our And, and, to and we're young. <laughs> yeah. We're young, bro. We're young. No, we need, uh, look at we all, we yeah, need the babies. We need them. But just don't have to be today. Take your time. Yeah. I mean, like, like, like in, in a sense of, the type of, the type of, the type of energy we want right now, we want some progressive, feed the world positivity and good energy and good information type spirits right now. So a, a child coming into this type of atmosphere is still good. People, I don't want people to see these small or one time or first time instances of immense violence as the end of Turks and Caicos. This is just a pivotal point and we need to look at what's happening and combat it the proper way versus just losing all hope. And a lot of people are gonna leave, they leave this country and never come back right now. Hmm. So we need to be like the voice of reason and showing them why they shouldn't leave or why they should come back. Well, I mean, listen, there's, there's two sides to every situation, right? So mm -hmm. although we are in the process of growing our population, we need more kids. I mean, you can't reasonably argue with a, a person being a little bit more cautious than we would have been, Agreed. or even our parents would have been 
about having children. I mean, yeah. it's just even the social issues about raising a kid right now. We were talking earlier before we started filming yeah. about, I mean, the things they're exposed to and talking about gender identification and, and, yeah. and, um, and sexuality and stuff like this. Like, it's not easy being a parent. So no. I wouldn't advise anybody to rush on, into it or, or not thoroughly think the decision through, especially who you're making a child with, because that's, that's another thing people don't really <laughs> talk about, right? But, I mean, uh, Captain, Captain, your, your father, chime in. What do you that's got everything. for us? Why am I lie? That fatherhood thing? <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> oh, God. It's scary. Oh, my God. But, you know, it, it has a lot of good to it, because sometimes things like this is what it takes to steer people in the right direction. You know, like when it was just me, hell, yeah, we probably wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, when it's just you, you just see an open road and be like, hey, the world is yours. Let's go. But boy, when you got them children. Slow it down. And knowing you got to really, hey, unless you want them to become this or unless you want them to do without and then having to beg people or do mm -hmm. it, you, gotta, you best have it. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, when I look at my two children, I thank God for them. But at the end of the day, some things in life would have scared me because, like you say, this ain't the same world we grew up in. No. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give you an example. His, his mom called me. Like, hey, Michael told me the teacher hit him and uh, make him to face the wall. What's up with that? You got to understand. He can't do that and that. I said, that's all. You listen, listen. I, I don't know what he do, but that's a teacher. She, he's supposed to understand this. And I said, hey, you show me what, you want me to go find out what happened? Because yeah. if I got to go find out and she tells me he had fall, that's a deep Second, thing to do. And yeah. wasn't it like that back in the day? Yeah. You had the that's one at school. Option. You had the one yeah. when you reach home. Yeah. You see, when a child do wrong in school or whatever, I mean, even today in society, and this is a problem I really don't understand. Parents ready to kill them teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Parents ready to skin them teachers. <laughs> oh, what you had my child for? Or why, my child, time you make him uh, stand up to the wall? Or you had, a, had him, boy, teachers in we school, is make him put dash on top of your head. <laughs> make him stand up outside in the hot sun. If that's what it takes to make you get it. Child it abuse. It day, <laughs> boy. That's true. You know what so lady? That's true. Like, <laughs> I call it this. I call it this. Stop playing. I was like, hey. Let me tell you something. No, that's, that's real. Was, that's <laughs> real teacher growing up. Because yep. that's what. That's a no-nonsense person. Mm -hmm. Zero tolerance. She got a slow walk and got a that straight lock. And boy, you know what's transferred from... Uh, 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 the Matilda, yeah. <laughs> Intimidating, right? What? The, the fear Christ in you. That's, 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 that's what's needed. Do. There's consequences for... Every action. Amen. So if you are mad that your kids are being corrected and they face a punishment mm -hmm. for something wrong, you are teaching them the wrong. Mm -hmm. No that's accountability. You are... See, yep molding their minds the wrong way. So they feel like this world is just, you can do anything, but for every action, there's a reaction. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if, it, if, 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 it, if it has already gotten to the point where the child is behaving like that, that would mean that the parent has already failed. Yeah, we felt we've already fallen down yeah, somewhere. Yeah, they already fallen, right? So they, parents need to work to be proactive. Don't have to do it before time. time, you know, like, 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 yeah, that, you were gonna say that aggressive like, response, right? I like, jump into that. So, like, let's like, exactly like, glad you bring that up. Like, my last name, I come from a innately aggressive family mm -hmm. on, on my father's side. And just recently, I had my son get in a situation, they only seven, but it is something to pay attention to because mm -hmm. I know that this could be genetic mm -hmm. or it could just be. Boys being lack, boys. Boys being boys, and mm -hmm. I'm not in Grand Tuck right now, physically mm -hmm. present, so you know boys can act out from. But it's what we do with the information mm -hmm. as parents. Mm -hmm. So I got this information. Now I got to work on him, work on his, work on letting him know that he has an attitude, mm -hmm. and we have to work on adjusting it or turning it down, or whatever it may be, and work on what is causing. Mm -hmm. so that we could prevent that too. So, in TI, it, it, would be, it would be a good thing for parents to really be observant of big kids. Mm -hmm. Who are they doing? Why they do it? Who they most frequently do it with? Mm -hmm. And then you would know how to go about solutions. Whether it be they be 
going out too much, turn down is going out. You want tablet too much, turn down on the tablet. Mm -hmm. You whatever it may be, but you don't want nothing to be too excessive with your mm -hmm. child to where they feel like they could have access to it when they want. Because ideally, the world we grew up in, children don't get nothing when yep. they want. Mm -hmm. You only get when you allow what to have. What mommy cook, we eat. Or what mommy, mommy buy, well. That's it. So we're in a different we time. We keep a long way. We come this too is... far <laughs> for some of the things we well, do. I think, I think that's what makes us good examples of how it could turn out well, right? Like this is an effective way of raising your child. Yes. Because sometimes understanding that I can't have everything I want is, isn't a bad thing. Yeah. It, uh, and and you life. talk about that accountability, man. Yeah. Growing up as a, these days as a child, you don't know that there's a punishment or a reaction to a reaction. You just do. Mm -hmm. Whatever impact it has on everybody, that's your problem. When we were children, we were young children having to think about every action, like a grown up. Mm -hmm. I know if I do this, I'm gonna get a cut up. I go if, to the beach. Right. I gotta be home oh, by a certain time. If I don't, it's about to get children, before. But children these days don't think about it. We, so we had law. Yeah. Had law. So now you used to wear law. So now I ask you guys the question: How does that translate to when that child becomes an adult in their relationship with real laws and law enforcement? Because. You, they're behaving like a delinquent, but as a child, it's cute, you know, it's easy to ignore. But now when they become an adult, it's not coming home late, it's not breaking a window, it's running up in somebody's house, it's punching somebody in the face, it could potentially be shooting somebody. So my question is, wh where do we stop it? How do we prevent it from getting to this point? Oh, uh, that's a good question. But that, you, you can jump in first? Go ahead, bro. Um, you know, I'd say to put a lid on it, mm -hmm. the upcoming children and the youth that we have right now, you know, like I said before in the past, you know, parents got to take more role in, the, in active positions in their children's life and mm -hmm. know where they're at, who they associate with, what they watch, all that. That's for the ones that are still young and still have time to change and mm -hmm. whatnot. I'll add one thing and go to the school, go to the PTA. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents oh, yeah. do not go to the, they don't oh, know yeah. what's going on yeah. in the school. You have I used to go to my son PTA in Zentech. No PTA, nothing. I nothing. agree. The yeah. PTA, the sports, you got to show them you deal for them when it's good and when it's bad. That is true. Yeah. Continue. And another thing is, like, you would have teachers contact parents personally and um, give them a little information about their child behavior or their they performance at school, work-wise and whatnot. If there's something that, you know, they don't agree with, or something like, the, like you think, or if you and the teachers tend to hitch at some point, mm -hmm. it ain't right to display that behavior, especially like rowing and costing the teacher in front of the right, child. Right. Because what you expect coming from that? If you mm -hmm. see, hey, my mind costs him, so <laughs> you understand, that coming next. Yep. The child looking to tell you piece of his mind too, anyway. Mm -hmm. And whenever you tell him something he ain't want to hear, he going to call who? Mm -hmm. The same person who he see putting mm -hmm. you in your place. Mm -hmm. But Ain't no doubt a lot of younger people starting to have kids. Like they say, this is, it's the saying, kids having kids. Mm -hmm. Who babies. still need some schooling and growing this up. But at the end of the day, you know, we ought to put right where right, where right is and wrong where wrong is. And we always like to say, you know, a, children, a child ain't just a parent. It's, it's, it's a community what brings up a child. But we got to start being that community. Mm -hmm. Oh, we so far you know? from the village. Mm -hmm. We so far from it, you know. If Reggie beat my kid today, I ready to go look for, I say Reggie, Nolan beat my kid today, I ready to go look for Nolan Webb, why you touch my kid? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, let me find out what he did wrong, because yeah. this is the adult, this is the child, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. I ain't I look at it, oh, that's the neighbor, he's gonna touch my kid, I don't want to touch my kid, because that's where you're yeah. spoiling that child. Yeah. You mm -hmm. understand? From the teacher, from the, from the, the neighbor, I mean, if you want this child to, 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 to grow up and, 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 and be something, mm -hmm. it's it gonna take the community, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And sometimes our display as adults, around certain kids and our activities. I to let the community raise my child. It is kind of influence, you know, children <laughs> in some ways. It's, you know, not, you, you it's know, not the same community. It ain't the same community. It's, it's the not the same, same, same community. But yeah. it's, it's always important to hear a situation out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why they got courts and things convened today to see how yep. matters actually go. Yep. And who wrong, got to take the blow and take the, the penalty, and who right, they go scotch-free. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's it's how life got to be. Being a child like being court, right? Your yeah. mother was the, the judge. She present the case. What did you do wrong? You were your own defense. Yes. And yes. then she would prosecute you. Normally, you lose anyway. Prosecution always wins. Go to your room and or whatever. You get your discipline at the end of the day, but you learn about you it. You learn about but it. Now, we're asking tough questions, right? Uh -huh. So my tough question is, we talk about parents and playing a more active role. What do you say to this parent, one-parent household, maybe a single mother, working a job, 
she working ridiculous hours. It's not like before where you had the sister, the auntie, the the uncle, places you go after school, your cousin house where you hang out because you know your mommy is a single parent. Own. So she doesn't have time to go to a PTA. She barely can afford school fees. Maybe she's sending kids to a public school that has a, a, a kind of iffy reputation right now. So we're putting a lot of responsibility on, a, on the parents, thinking that it's a two-parent household with making good money and everyone has time to do this. What about that household? And we might even be able to assume that a lot of these individuals come to that household because they don't get that kind of attention. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to that mother? How, what does she do? She doesn't have the time to go to PTA. She's barely making ends meet as it is. And you know, we'll start with Jeffrey and, and we'll work our way down the line. What are we saying to her? First of all, I can talk to the employers, right? I was in England briefly recently, and in England they have a good system, mm -hmm. right, where you have certain leave, right? The employers need to grace parents. If I have a meeting, let me go. The money doesn't, if you can't be there for the child, the money's not What's the point it. of the money? What's the point of the What's money? The mm -hmm. the you money? Know? Because you're going to work to provide for the child. You being there for the child is more important than the money. Yeah. You know, and I know it sounds harsh, but when you have that money and the child is in jail, or oh God forbid the child dies. Yeah. What's the point? What's the but point? don't jobs like make it like Yeah, I think that's like like, like they don't make it easy. They no. Yeah. So, so, so if, if so the tourism industry especially yeah, the tourism industry, they especially. You so if you have a meeting with your kid and you have to leave off a job for something of some, or say go to, he go to the hospital, or you, he got a school, it. so your hours get cut. That's what you're saying. It might be worse. You, you might, might get fired. Yeah. Let's say you work. Get disciplinary. Let's say you work in. Let's let's so pay the picture. That's where the country come in there. Let's pay yeah, the picture. You work. Your mother. She works in housekeeping, right? At these resorts, one of these resorts that's incredibly busy. They got only a few people working this shift. She's got ten rooms to clean before arrivals coming in. You get in trouble at school and they say, call your mother. And they call in there at work. Some of these hotels don't even allow them to have their cell phones. So let's say hypothetically they do reach her. She now has a difficult decision to make. Yeah. What yep. she do? Parents have to realize too that. That's tough. You have to, tough. Even no. if you're going to lose the money, the time. That ain't tough. You have to put that time. The time in the kid is more money than the time on the job. I believe in things like that. I always just have a holistic approach to things. I like look at root cause. So when you say, what do we do to that? We go to the root cause. The root cause would be the way that the policy is drafted around the employee. So what we would want to do then is rally towards changing that policy that protects a parent if she has an emergency to go to her child, that the hotel just got to do it, point blank period. Ain't like they losing no money. They ain't losing no money because that one person left. I could, I could say I worked in the tourism industry 14 years already, and I could tell you, tourists only like good service. They don't care who giving it to them. Mm. You could be, you could look like you only got two cents to your name. If you give them top service, that's what they're gonna rate you off. They ain't rating you off nothing else. So I would say the Turks and Caicos Islands should be on the grounds right now of and that's something I've been on. Diving more into policy. Our policies in the Turks and Caicos Islands are outdated, in my opinion. A lot of them. Some of the things that happen in our country on a, on a small scale. Let's just stick to customer service. You can hardly report the person who you can trying to get some inquiries from to anyone and get results. Not in the United Kingdom. You say person, you're talking about like, uh, like government offices or private sector? It could be a private sector. It could be an individual. Like our culture in the Turks and Caicos Islands overall has a certain standard towards customer service unless you're passionate about the realm you work in. Mm -hmm. Unless you love tourism, people in tourism don't give good service unless they love it or unless they're afraid to lose their job. But it's a lot of disgruntledness. I think that's in every workplace. However, I feel like we should have so much self-pride or national pride or patronism within us in this country that if we go to a job within tourism, we treat it like this is 
like gold. Like, I genuinely think a lot of people don't belong in tourism. They're only there because that's the only option. Like they don't um, want to deal with tourists. They don't like you got to understand you go to some business. Some people work in the back. Some people don't deal with people at all. They agree. don't have that natural that's, that's, gift. That's, that that's one of the reasons why I've never tried to work in a hotel in the sense of like on, 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 on any lower levels. Um, it ain't for everyone. But it's my belief, just stemming back to policy for a second, that if you want to have someone working in tourism, they should know what tourism is. So we got a lot of individuals that work in tourism that don't know anything about the country or the island that they're on. And for, for people who work in taxi, they know that you have to take a tides program in order to get the taxi license. And the tides program, it tells you about the specific island I think both you guys had to do as well as a pro captain. I got it uh, as well. Yeah. You got it as a captain now? Yeah, I think they have But this is the, the first day you had to training. do that as a captain or the second? Wait, what's that? The, the tourist board training. With the tourist board. With Ms. Claire. Together, individuals. Um, if Two I remember. exceptionally. Anyway, I remember all of it. But I, you are, I know what it's not right on. now. I promise I know what it's that for. I just, I can't remember right now. Okay, hear what I'm saying. This should be mandatory. Here's why. It is these days. For tourism across the board. I thought captains yeah. too. I, I really I thought. Think, I know you don't. You guys have to do guys, like. We have to like what? Yes. It's a tourist board training. That's just an acronym. Tourist, it's tourist just an acronym for it. In front of Miss Claire, where she, she do this class. How you supposed to dress? And what's the population in each island? Just what's the dressing. national dress? What are you known for? Honestly, plants, you mean like a training of, to bring you up to speed? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, no. I've never done anything okay. like that with anybody. So here's why I believe. Mm. Everyone in the tourism industry should do the TIES program. And, and, and I, I, I only base this off experience. I can recall in 2019, 2018, when I moved back from England, it was guys working on the beach, illegal guys, they ain't got no work permits, nothing. Cool, you're just trying to hustle. But when the guest asks you something about Grand Turk, you make up something because your mind is on the money at this point. So this with lack of information about the country does in a sense of crippling tourism. So they say, I vividly remember a guy one day a lady was like, how big is the island of Grand Turk? And he was like, oh, not big. And I'm like, what? She want to know, like, specifically, how big is it? Like, you know, we, we, this is what tourists want. I, when I travel, I want no information about where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So I believe that everyone in tourism should have a, a synopsis of the island, at least, that they're on. If the tourists in front of your face, you should be able to tell them something specific. I can, and correct. I can proudly say that they've taken that step. They may have not reached Caribbean cruising as yet, but I can proudly say I went to the wrong tides class. So I ended up. No, we in taxi. That taxi thing no, had no, always no. been in that. Went, I'm telling you, I went to tides class one day, but it was like excursion. It was oh. Yeah, I know so for I know a fact. For, uh, okay. I know for a fact. The tour like, operators. It wasn't like, for you. It wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know for a fact they do it. Even I know. That's why I was surprised yeah. when Cap said. Same thing. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it is they reach us as yet, and they're trying to reach to like. Because I had you know, a word with that about what maybe the divisions would need it more. Mm -hmm. I was about to say. I you think know. for for guys like him who've been doing what they've been doing for so long, it I can understand too. why. Yeah. Because now it's really geared towards I people that are new. And entering the field of tourism, they'd imagine guys who've been doing it as long yeah. as he's doing it. But let, let's pivot for a second. You talked about policy, and I want before we get too deep, and I want us to talk about the economy. So we were having a conversation earlier, me and one of the producers, mm -hmm. and we were talking about like how policy these days aren't influenced by our community anymore. Like that's what policy is, right? Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's laws based on our needs as people. Mm -hmm. So we say, hey, I don't like this, I don't like this, I like this, like that, and then mm -hmm. they take it, they make policy, they make laws. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the economy and, and just the trend of Turks and Caicos. A lot of the things that seem to be benefiting people other than Turks and Caicos Islanders aren't necessarily benefiting Turks and Caicos Islanders. We talk about real estate market booming, prices going through the roof. And I don't know about you guys, but those prices going up don't necessarily work in my favor because that you pricing me out of range. And obviously it's gonna to continue to transition into rental, right? So we're having a conversation about in about we believe in about two to five years, the average Turks and Caicos Islanders won't let alone own, won't be able to rent in Provo. Mm -hmm. Just the price is gonna be too high, income's going down, uh, rental prices going up. Like do you guys genuinely think as young Turks and Caicos Islanders, man, like like it are we doing anything 
to make sure we're benefiting from these opportunities. And do you think it ties into what's going on with gang violence no. and crime? Is it in any way connected? No. I think it, I think it ties in. I think right now it's hard to make a living. And a lot of people in Turks and Caicos didn't realize they were living paycheck to paycheck until COVID. Mm, okay. A lot of people didn't realize, like, living paycheck to paycheck is poor. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people didn't realize that because it kept coming. Uh -huh. Right? So that's one problem. And like you said, the prices are rising. I can't afford a piece of land. I've been looking. I can't afford a piece of land. And does that benefit me in the future? And I have kids and I have to work and now I can't leave time to go to the meeting. But if I didn't have to pay rent, and I had my house, I had a piece of land, then I wouldn't have to work too hard. Mm -hmm. This is exactly right? what we're so talking about. That's how we all comes back. So a lot of times we're dealing, like my brilliant friend Simon would say, we're dealing with the branches. We have to deal with the root. Mm. Agreed. Yep. So the root cause to a root resolution to the same scenario you just mentioned would be to amend the policy in Turks and Caicos Islands to benefit us, right? What policy? The Constitution. We want to change our constitution. Who constitution? It's That's our constitution? No. no. Sorry. We yeah. want to change our legislation. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That, that part of, part of, part of, part we want to change our, our, our well, Quote, unquote, I'm a British citizen. <laughs> but that ain't our constitution, bro. <laughs> we want to change that or amend our legislation <laughs> where it's tailored to us. The British constitution. No, it's but British when it, constitution. See, the thing is, when it start to be tailored to us, the government probably see where they kind of lose X amount of dollars because mm -hmm. if you got to make to them it's like boy if we got to make land down to where the locals could afford it I mean they lose you dollars no man you we know? don't even need to come on now let's think like that come on, don't let them off that yeah, easy yeah, now can't like, let them off like that not no losing in other parts of the world they figure it I out I mean it, we that can't must be facts you yeah. know? we deserve the best we deserve the best, we we deserve the best at we every level we do here are determined based on I heard a realtor said it, I'm not sure if it's 100% correct, what this one was sold for. So if a billionaire came and buy this for $5 million, mm -hmm. this property increased. Is it? Agreed. Is it? Value? $5 million from? Oh, so, got to change the policy. Right? Value is supply and demand. You see, like, contracts, pro sport contracts. You see um, uh, the NFL, right, with these quarterbacks. Deshaun Watson got all that guaranteed money. Now, Lamar Jackson, he's not settling for less than guaranteed money. The market now... Says it, it's gone out, yeah, so he's not. A, you can't even talk to me unless you come with a fully guaranteed contract. That's our real estate market. You're absolutely right. Yeah. This is the only place in the world the value doesn't go down. COVID, our prices didn't go down. The recession of 2008 to 2012, the prices didn't go down. You do know we don't have any real estate compliance in this country, right? Real estate. First of all, <laughs> all right. Focus on me right now, because I'm about to get all of us in trouble. Right now. The whole concept of selling real estate is the, wor all right, the worst thing I've ever heard. So first you tell me, all we have is land. That's yeah. all you got to give me. You have okay. nothing else. We, we're a young country, like Moses said. Yeah. All we got is land. Back in the day, you see, you one piece of commercial land, one piece of residential True. land. That was your birthright. Yeah. They don't even do that anymore. Yeah. It was Most an entitlement. Of, an entitlement. I would yeah. get that to help me feed my family, grow yeah. this country. You don't do that anymore. So now, you're selling my birthright over and over. I'm sitting in Provo. I grew up in this country. All I've ever seen, this is my home. And I'm watching land move, move. I don't have any. It's going. Now I see people that don't even look like me just jump off a plane, got a real estate license, and selling mm -hmm. my birthright. Mm -hmm. So you tell me, you don't have any land for me. you selling my birthright. You got a person who's never lived in this country, don't any, know nothing about mm -hmm. this country, mm -hmm. selling my birthright mm -hmm. to somebody else who's not from this mm -hmm. country. What are you telling me? And they say buy it because Drake buy it. Drake just right? buy his lot, man, come right? buy us. And we brag I about real estate. It benefits from the sale of real estate. The stamp that does that is that stamp duty the government gets that that tax that small percentage is it worth the damage it causes to to us? No. Is it ever worth it? No, no, no. And, and, Never. and it all comes back. So now no. we can't afford property. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. We can't afford to pay rent because there's no control on that either. Nope. Like some people asking sixteen hundred dollars for a one bedroom with 
nothing. We can mm -hmm. hardly get leverage from the banks. Right. Oh, no. Can facilitate no. That. no. So I have to work two jobs. Yeah. Or a mother has to work two jobs. And it affects the future, the youth. Right? And, and now we, we play like, what's going on? This is the result of the actions y'all took 15 years ago. Yeah, that's true. Years ago. That is yeah. true because a lot of people, but I don't like, ever play maybe crime wouldn't have been this high if this cost of living wasn't on. as high. Right? Yeah. yeah. Because when somebody got to go wait for a hotel or some job to give them or seven, eight hundred dollars every two weeks, and your rent is about this, and your power, your water, kids, I mean food, gas, yeah. It's, hey, it's a drag. Bro, we, 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 kind we of basically it pushing your mind in different directions. Yeah, but we sold you know? ourselves as a nation already, man. When you when you just look at, I just was having a look at the to Hotel and Tourism Association board just yesterday, the actual panel. I was looking at it, and I was saying, man, I don't see no locals. Mm. I don't see no locals. And these, mind you, a few locals there, but minimal. But I was like, this is what represents tourism and hotel business in the Turks and Caicos Islands as a whole. And none of these people share a passion for the Turks and Caicos Islands, in my, in my opinion, because they don't even still represent, they don't even wholeheartedly represent our flag. They from other places, they still tie to their countries, they still pay homage and solidarity to their country. So that means they're in profits from their investments in this country. It's going to go back to their country. And this represents the Turks and Caicos Islands Hotel and Tourism Association. And I was like, well, we can't benefit from that. But who gave it to them? Us. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, though. Don't get no realer than that. No. If this gets worse, what's going to happen to those, with those people? Like, I ain't got nowhere to go. See, no, I'm no, I am I so glad, Jeffrey. I'm no, so glad. No. Jeffrey, he said it perfectly. Yeah. Listen, well, you know, Jeffrey, let, me, get right. let me tell you, we don't want to give the impression that we, like, we're xenophobic. No. We know Turks and Caicos is a melting pot. All yeah. of us mix up, like, Kong Savage, all of us. Like, even look at uh, who we choose to marry, who we choose to love. We want people, we are growing population, we want people to come here and make this your home, never leave. We talking about individuals who come here, benefit, and run. Yeah. When COVID lick, they gone. When the, the recession comes, they so gone. Things so sweet here, they just come benefit and don't run. They, benefit and call their friends. They come. make they make come. fifty thousand dollars, yeah. forty thousand go out via Western Union. Ten thousand will be lucky if it stay here. And it's not a sensitive topic. This is the reality in the state of the country. Like one of our biggest exporters, is money. You see our Friday evening on our Western Union line. Look, that's not a joke. Some people don't spend a dollar here. Not a dime. Some nah. people, and that's a poison to the country. Overall. You are a leech. Yeah. Right? You don't, Hallelujah. You, you don't pay rent. Amen. Yeah. Right? You don't yeah. pay rent. Yeah. You don't, you eat at the hotel. Yeah. And then you take your whole paycheck and you send it back home. Mm -hmm. I know people like that. You ain't telling me. I know. I've seen it. This guy I know. have a phone. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you got. Man. <laughs> Bro, say not even a fool. may just be this way or may just be this different and like there's nothing we could do because the greater half of the population is that that. All right, so yeah. I'm glad you so bring that up. The majority of them going to the IGA shopping for them to re-up and make their money. The majority of them going to Western Union, the majority of them, and maybe that's just what the government just finally accept. Like now, they, see, again, we talk about accept. I don't like that word accept. When did we start becoming an accepting nation? We were an ex a nation that thought we deserved the best. We thought we deserved the best at every era. Private sector, give us the best. Public sector, our elected officials, give us the best in terms of policies, how you govern. At what point did we become this nation? Oh, well, that's it. We good. No problem. It is cool. When the, when the right person starts paying the most, the, the one who gives you the bigger dollar. But I'm glad you asked that question. So we've been complaining for like 45 minutes to an hour. Let's talk some solutions now. So in terms of this economy and in, in, in what's going on and us being priced out of the market, mm -hmm. you guys are in the nitty gritty, self-employed. Well, they know you work for Caribbean Cruise, but you're a captain, you're a boat captain. You can go anywhere and be a boat captain. They can't take that away from you. That's like being a pilot, a doctor, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So you guys see it from a very rare perspective that sometimes doesn't get the kind of representation it needs. So my question is you, to you, 
in your day-to-day -day moving around and ongoing, what kind of changes can make a significant difference in not only improving the quality of your life, the quality of your children's life, just making money and being a better contributing citizen? What, are you, what changes would help with that? Jump on it first of all. all right. Let's go, Moses. Go ahead. First of all, we need real representation. This is how you bring about change. We have people who we hired to represent us who is overlook our every cry. I don't care what they say. They is overlook our every cry and complain. They can go on the internet and this is what they use as they measure and tape, and they can see the nation crying over and over and over about something, and they'll still go with it. And I just be like, well, it's the same people who pay you to look out for them, but it's like they pay you to go be a beneficial stand to outside people. People who can't vote. People who can't vote. Every decision you make, it benefits somebody from outside. Every move you make, it either line in your pockets or somebody from outside. Like when we can start seeing changes that benefit locals. You know they got this little joke they just make now, they just say, man, there is no benefit to owning a Turks and Caicos Islands passport. And I kid you not, I have not used my TI passport in over 10 years. So really, there is no benefit to having a Turks and Caicos Islands passport. We don't get no exemptions to nothing, really. We don't get no, we don't even get our land no more. We got to raffle for our land. Mm -hmm. We don't get no representation from the police. We don't get no representation from the governor, in a sense, because we got a police chief who they watch fail four years, five years in a row. Like how long you gotta see somebody fail to know that they ain't good for us. Mm -hmm. So we got these type of representatives, people who would see things going wrong, see us complaining about these things going wrong and do absolutely nothing only because they know we're not capable of doing nothing. They already know our representatives don't listen to us and don't move when we say move. They already know our representatives will see us drowning and not show us a life raft. And hey, it's okay, my people. The thing is, when you see it like that, That's when you see like you is. in a boat with, with sinking and you don't have no help, that's when the only thing you can do is try to get out and swim. And jump and, ship. And, and jump well, this will be on now. How else so, we survive? So tell me what that looks like. What the, one thing in your day to day, what you do every day, how you make money, how you feed your children. Give me one thing that would make swimming easier. One change that would make it easier. One thing you'd like to see change. Like in the boating field? Any, no, yeah, no, boat, it don't matter. To real life, As a Turks know. and Caicos Islander, one obstacle that is constantly in your way that if it changes, will make a huge difference. What I want to see change is for us to remember our heritage, for us to remember where we come from. And, you know, sometimes, you know, that ain't a bad thing, and you can make that work for you. And such is like the boating, mm -hmm. you know. Years ago, well, as far as I know, South, that been the boating world. Mm -hmm. You know, Provo and other places, you know, you have more opportunities. So we kind of run away from things like boating, whatever it is relating to the hot sun, farming, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, but at the end of the day, if you don't, if you're coming from a spot where you're in a bad position, or you ain't working, or you don't have no money, then automatically your brain and your mind supposed to start thinking. Uh, not, it ain't always gonna be in a positive way because some people go negative. Okay, let me go rob this one. Mm -hmm. Survival, mm -hmm. you know. But our natural island heritage, like diving, fishing, you know, I would like to see some changes in these areas where young people could wake up and realize, hey, there's some money. I don't even have to have education to become a boat captain. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to have education or know how school to school education. You know, mm -hmm. school education mm -hmm. to know how to plant that tree or whatever. Mm -hmm. All of us in Tux Island Valley. I ain't come from a family of boating. Mm -hmm. None of my family would ever own a boat. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm a captain. Mm -hmm. All of we got one. Ugly uncle, one big teeth auntie, mm -hmm. somebody out there who know but cooking, mm -hmm. who know these things from, who could teach us these things, mm -hmm. or a friend, or a cousin, or an auntie, but how much of us is really tapped into it? Right. You know, and it boils back to what I said before. Like, you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't embrace the opportunities we see right in front of us. You mm -hmm. can go right there on the beach tomorrow and make a couple hundred dollars. You know, Facts. these tourists come here looking to engage in conversations, meet island people. 
I used to, when I, before I became a captain, I used to start out on the beach, Facts. cleaning conch shells on the ground, ten dollars a shell, making bread. Yeah. 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 Like the day, buy, buy a boat, own a boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Like, we start off in that life. <laughs> well, talk. You don't even need a permit for it. You can go right out there tomorrow, you know, in busy season and, and all this book power sale, banana boat, all that. People, most people don't like the idea of going out there in the, on, in the hot sun. Mm -hmm. Or having to go tourists, like you said, or they ain't really tourist people. Mm -hmm. But from where I stand in, boy, when you're broken, they ain't got it, hey. you become that person. Hey, I'm you sure you gotta eat. <laughs> what I'd like to see change is for a lot of us to tap into that mindset, you know, tap into that willingness, that potential, that Absolutely. gift. All of us get them hidden potential and the them gifts within mm -hmm. with, with, with us, and opportunity be right there in our face. Mm -hmm. How much of us is really go tapping into it? You know, so some people have that place. to do so much great things in this world. God put all the potential in us. You know, but how much of us is really be tapping into it? Very few of us. Oh, I don't want to want to see me. Oh, I don't want to go around on people. Yep. Oh, I don't, oh, he, ain't nobody. Yep. Hey, hey, I started yep. a kung salad business. Didn't think it would blow the way it is. Listen, oh, I had a celebrity I deliver kung salad to numerous mm -hmm. times. So I got a little question when I see you put Sprite in it, but it's good. It's good. <laughs> I can't even argue with it. Like, <laughs> somebody gave me a style to run with, and yeah. I took it and made it work. I, I had some question marks, but I tasted like this man doing something over here. <laughs> no, but they got to strive. They got to strive, man. You yeah. got to strive. It takes that willingness. It takes yeah. that power, especially when you see you reach your bottom and got nothing left, no family to turn to, nobody. Yeah. You only could look at, when you reach your bottom, the most you can do is look up because you're at your bottom. Yeah. So, so when you start to look up, you start to look in different directions where you can pick yourself up, where you can make some money, where you can grow. And all of us got that in us, but who really is go reaching into it and using it? So, but why are they? Why are they looking to work in the bank? Why are they working to look for government? Why are they looking to work a place where they can get dressed up and make not as much money as they like to make and try to keep up with the Joneses? Why are they willing to go out there and have the money they make be a direct reflection of how hard you work? Because people in it most times for looks. Mm. Or some people in it because that's what your parents mm. instill in you. Mm. Oh, my dad didn't want me to go out there no hot time. Mm. Some parents would actually be, oh, uh, boy, don't go, on, don't go try to find a job. You got to be on people's roof. Well, you got to go in the boat. Or the, I used to hear these things yeah. every day. We transition mm. as a nation from cultural you know, to industrial. When I saw, mm. when I came to Provo and saw and that, what a tourist willing to pay for a conch shell, <laughs> that was it. Some of them was got the sky the ocean every day. That light bulb went off. That light bulb went off. <laughs> When I look and see how much the person would give you just to go take them riding around on a boat versus you got broke up boat and so you got to go find lobster conch, hope they've had a good for you to get mm -hmm. them to pay. And that's only in season. Boy, Provo got a lot of potential. Boy, hey, you're going to eat good here. Right. Mm -hmm. By looking around and see, guess what? Any much people actually tapping into this thing? No. Boy, no. when I saw Provo and saw the potential, I can tell you, I, I won't say what's saying like what Tony Montana said, but I'm not saying, like, <laughs> I know, you know, I know exactly. Huh? Over. That kind of get in me. I was like, boy, you could actually become somebody here. Your name, but the bro, you about to be something. <laughs> so, so, you got the willingness, you got the people, you know, energy in you. Mm. And it's like, you know, people used to tell me, like, you know, folks just drawn to you in some ways because, right, your energy just a little different. You know, you keep it real and whatnot. And ever since I took off, I ain't like fall since. So you made that transition. You went from being an employee. Uh, all the working in tourism to now being a self-employed and entrepreneur, but you use a skill you had to make money. Your income is directly related on how hard you work. Like, give, us a, give us a little peek into that mindset because what we're describing now is why other Turks and Caicos Islanders aren't thinking this way, aren't willing to make that sacrifice or are just willing to not care about how other people view them when it comes to making money and taking care of your family. I think it's how we're taught in school entrepreneurship is not something that's really taught in school mm -hmm. and for me i got a glimpse of it i was fortunate to participate in vibes in it was something that the the central bank did, oh, cdb cdb did uh -huh. i think three years ago at, at beaches that's when entrepreneur really hit me and then i started to read so they taught us how to do a business license a, a, a business plan and how to do business license and so forth and why it's important. And then I read a few books as well. Mm -hmm. You know, books changed my life. Books was like the glasses. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know how some people, when they don't wear glasses, they can't see? Yeah, books. I, I Boy, don't before know. the books, I was lost. Mm -hmm. And so that, that really helped me. And I realized, like, I want employee of the year. Yeah. And I still didn't have no money. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you were the most said. valuable employee yeah. and you were still broke. I still didn't have no money. <laughs> you know? 
That's crazy. Don't no, that make you think. <laughs> oh, listen, I don't want us to. Oh, listen. Yeah. I don't want us just scared over that. This man won an award to say he was the most valuable employee in that whole organization. And he had no money. It was broke. Yeah. Couldn't take his little bookie out of a little date. Yeah. They couldn't go to Gourmet instead of ice. That's a pivotal point. That'll make you change. Something greater. Yeah. I was like, you know, and I, I know clients that came back just for my service. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I think businessman of the year would, would do me better. How can I get more for what I provide? You yeah. Know? And, you know, service was my passion. And I took a gamble on me, you know. Yeah. That's what we're afraid of. We're afraid to fail. But if you don't fall, you can never walk. Well, hey. If you stay crawling and you ain't get up and fall, you can never Facts. walk. Facts. So Moses, mm. I got this man here who's just a born hustler. Mm -hmm. He never had another option. He mm -hmm. was all about getting it. He saw an opportunity went for it. We saw a man who had to really hit the bottom of what being a valued employee looks like and had an opportunity presented him and he took an advantage of it. Mm -hmm. How did you end up self-employed? What, what was the trigger for you when you realized, all right, man, I got to get it? Nowhere that I applied to hired me. <laughs> okay, that's a clear and message. And they did a basis. I, I, I never knew the basis because I never worked anywhere for them to say that. The reason we don't want to hire him is because this place gave him a bad rapport or something. Just nowhere never hired me. And I have I just vividly remember like, man, man, you know how to make money. You literally know how to make money. You know how to speak properly. You know how to articulate ideas just try something and I can remember it was 2012 or 11 carnival we used to go on the beach and chill out like literally just do nothing chill out and just watch and I remember one day rail come on the beach with a cool of water only water and he like plant the seed in everybody mind who was just chilling there for like, listen, we could just put an idea together on this beach and make something out of it. He did the water thing. My friends, Jamal, them did the coconut thing. I did the Sea Dew Power Scooters. And then everybody grow from that into something else. So entrepreneurship for me is just survival. I had no other options. You know, like, but that's, 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 that's after coming to Providentialis and having a great opportunity at RA Shore Designs, but this is in Grand Turk. So I would also say that sometimes where you is depends on what you get. And if you ain't getting nothing from where you is, sometimes it's good to move. So with that being said, I wasn't getting much out of Grand Turk. I moved to United Kingdom. This is where people start seeing me for my value versus who I was or who they thought I was. So, so you're saying you had to go to another country yes. to be appreciated. Yes, but also that's a good thing because that is also show you your worth. That is make you know what you're capable of doing too. Mm -hmm. So I was working in compliance in the United Kingdom, but I never thought that would have been a feel for me. That's just, you know, that was survival for me at the time, but it was something I ended up liking. We got a lot of businesses down here that need compliance currently right now. And they would hear that from me and disregard it. But they would hear it from somebody who's not from here and bite it like, yes, we need you for compliance. Like, come, come and do it. So this is the type of country we got. So I was always taking an approach like Dame Dash. Dame Dash is a mentor that I follow on the, excuse me, on the internet for business, right? And he, also, he always got this ideal of creating solutions. You want to work to a car wash, they don't want to hire you? Go build a car wash. Hire people. You know, you, you, sometimes the solution is you have to be the answer to the problem. So I always had to be the answer to my own problems, no matter what it was. And even my methodology to gain in the answer, sometimes it will be very, very stern, but I know that my direction and my, my method is going to bring me the results I'm looking for. And, and, and you just have to do, you just have to find these niches that's gonna help you progress yourself based on keen observation of your surroundings. Where you is, who you around, what kind of opportunities do you get in this surroundings, which leads back to the same young crowd. If you are in the public and you mingling up with the wrong crowd, you can't gain a certain type of results from that surroundings. 
and and then this is where observation comes in. So me, everywhere I go, I observe. I already know my strengths, and I and I gonna move accordingly based on the observation of wherever I'm at. And and, and this is what England teach me, not Turks and Caicos. Turks and Caicos deny me everything, you know. So it's it's be like that sometimes. But then I hear now. And look who I rally in for, Turks and Caicos. Mm -hmm. So that's just what has happened, bro, sometimes. Well, sometimes you got to move away to make a way, you know? That's it. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that. Because there are some things in other countries where they teach you and wicked build you and grow you that Turks kind of do the opposite, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, there's no question to it as to why some of the youths and the way how things going, everybody's yeah. so troubled. Because mm -hmm. if you really look at it, compared to when we was growing up, in our time, they had Youth is more active. I mean, mm -hmm. they had like, I mean, they still do the annual ball games in the house and all that, but stuff became more weak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, kids today just. Tablet. The world changed. Social yeah. media changed. Yeah. You know? I, well, I, I, think, I don't think we've adapted. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, they're still doing some of the things in terms of youth and youth day and, and youth um, involvement that they did when, when I was in school, when you guys were in school, yeah. and the kids aren't the same. It's different. Like, how, how are they adapting to engage these kids on their level? So, this is not to cut you across, say, right? Mm -hmm. It's a mindset thing, bro. He said it earlier. The education that we're fed from the primary level all the way to the high school level is the result of what kind of citizens we have in this society. So, when they want to see a new Turks and Caicos, this don't happen overnight. We're talking 10 years, five in primary school, five in high school. Mm. You got to totally revamp the syllabus completely challenging. In, in, in England, little children four, five, six doing coding mm -hmm. in, in school. Mm -hmm. And we got people, I don't know how to do coding, like 34. Mm -hmm. You know how to do coding? No. You get what I say? Mm -hmm. so, so far different so it's, no. it's, it's based on how the syllabus challenges the individual, and this is what is make more conducive individuals in society. So now we had a we had a point where we got a problem with the way Turks and Caicos is being ran. We even got a problem with the way the decisions that are being made. And all of that comes from how we think. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're in a country where there's no national pride. Like, No, but we're also we're, in a country where we don't even like law. We don't even like to abide by it. We you know? can't just say we don't like it. We have a culture where law never used to really reflect on us because we were so family oriented. Like if you're a police and you came around my house back in the day, it's very rare that you would have to enforce your law point on me. You might say, your parents man, already enforce yeah, you it. might say, man, more, man, chill out, man. We, we, we won't have to carry the station today, and da, da, da. And it's just the culture. And our force should be based on our culture. This is why we have community policing. We send them out to engage with the society and, and more of conform themselves to the society in a way where the society can be more comfortable. Not just break rules around you, but they can be comfortable enough to, to, to respect the rules around you and respect you and not be fearful when they see you. But we in a time now, people scared when they see the police. Let me ask you a question, since I got three former delinquents mm. in front of me. Mm. Let's talk about the relationship with police. You brought up community policing. Mm. Uh, like, what was your relationship with the police uh, growing up? What's your relationship with law enforcement now? And what crazy. kind of, like, how would you like to see it change or adapt to where young men could benefit from that relationship? And I'm not going to apologize for calling your delivery. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, no, no. I earned that. You, I earned that. <laughs> Let's start with you, Jeffrey. We've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never really had a problem with the police, you know. You know, the teachers was always my problem. <laughs> you know, I didn't make it to the police level, right? But I think, like Rice said, and my brother over there said, mm -hmm. there must be a presence. Like, you only see the police when there's a problem, mm -hmm. right? They need to be in the community. and. I have great relationships with police mm -hmm. now, you know. I don't look at them as the enemy, but a lot of people do, mm -hmm. you know. You hear the police come in, they come in to grab somebody. Something bad happened, and yeah. once the community mind is conditioned like that, and there's no, like, it's, it's too friendly. It's a job, mm -hmm. and certain things the community shouldn't hear back, especially when somebody make a report. You know, it's, it's like, okay. You know, we don't believe in them. 
-hmm. You know, you you're afraid to tell them something because can't trust them. Back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, yeah. and without trust, you know, it's nothing. Um, we need grants of more anonymous means of giving information for people who scared to speak open and stuff like people that. People that want to cooperate. Something like that would be that's easy to achieve. Um, in the in the in the lines of community policing, it's. There's several special officers within this force where they can go in any area. People just greet them with great immense respect and stuff like that. We got police like that. And, and to speak on relationships with police, like growing up, I personally used to feel like I, I picked on by police for, for different reasons. And it's, it's, it's times when I, I got in problems and I wanted to give my side and they just wouldn't hear it, and they was judging me based on whatever. I, I, I just used to say, man, it was my last name. So we need, we need, we need officers who, who, who open-minded to giving you an opportunity to plead your case before it gets to the point of you being arrested. Because many times, the methodology of policing is snatch you up, carry you to the station, and then we let the courts deal with it, whereas I feel like if, you're going, if you want the title of peace servant when you approach scenarios, you could do your little basic detective work right there. Like, let me hear your side, let me hear your side. And I make a determination based on the fact that I'm a peace officer, I make a determination right here. If I know this is gonna save you, a young 15 year old, from being caught in the system and having your name branded as a potential future repeated offender or uh, offender. I, as a police officer, would want to save you mm. from that fate, knowing what I've been through as a, as, a, as, a, as a delinquent with no representation. That's another thing. I feel like kids with no representation get taken advantage more by the system as a whole versus kids with representation. Mm. Because there's some kids out there they do the worst, but they got great representation. They come from great families. They come from revered families. Access to good lawyers. Access to good lawyers. Influence and access to privilege. And that's it. And then there's people who, they're innocent, but you just, you fit the description. Mm -hmm. Or you, or you, or you, 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 you move with the persona that we think would do this type of thing. Mm. And I fell victim to those type of things until I learned how to amend my body language, amend how I speak, amend who to say what to, especially if you're trying to gain a result from speaking. That's you maturity know? right there. That's maturity, mm -hmm. but it's something that needs to be expressed from either Big Brother programs to the mm -hmm. community or just straight up die-hard patriotic mm -hmm. people who care about tomorrow mm. and this is where we can come in like 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 you think i would ever see a little boy anywhere getting in trouble and i don't grab him and be like boy let's go we're going mm, to write calm down i know you're dead and, and i won't expect the same thing from yeah. my friends like you know because some people are just hot heads you know? some people just hot heads and until they meet someone and tell them look man you need to calm down and a lot of times it's just relating to them i used to be just like you bro mm. you were not the angriest person in the world i was 16 15 all this testosterone i want to fight everybody i get everybody you were in the first. You need just, to know. Just be patient. You just need you to need get through this period in your life without making any horrible decisions. It's going to ruin your entire life, and you can calm down just like everybody else. You need to know. So my question, how, what's your relationship right now? You cool with 5 -0? Yeah, I, I love the Bible ever since, uh, <laughs> ever I, since Farquhar. I still debate, but I love the police, bro. I still is debate, bro. Ever since Colin Farquhar <laughs> renewed my racket back in 2007. Stop playing. Yeah. Wipe it clean. Yeah, to wipe that clean. <laughs> hey, Tyler, do you right, eh? Yeah. No, yeah. but before you left, that's one of the good things the police commissioner did for me. <laughs> Expunge my racket. So we got one person who will bring Colin okay. back as commissioner. I know. I can't bring that. I can't bring that. I can't you brought that up, because I had a, I had a, I, I, no. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm glad he brought that up because I had a similar scenario. I had a similar scenario in relation to the rackets, right? Mm. Now, this is something, if the police won't make a step towards helping young men, like mm. something that they, that's within their power right mm. now, to help young men right now, since we're talking about solutions, right? Our government has the, 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 the zeal and things, like when you get convicted, they're going to slam that on your record mm. right now, okay? create a body of compliance that deals with going over the records 
to clear them for individuals when the time comes that the individuals don't have to come back to you now and be like, man, you know, you're supposed to clean my racket two years ago, man, my racket. So, so that's how it works now. Yeah, so you have to go and oppose some oh, yes. and your record expands. Oh, yes. Even if it's delinquent offenses? Oh, yes. You, Every it offense. Depends, it depends on the charge. It depends on the crime. If okay. you have murder, that ain't coming off. Never. That's lifetime. If you have something like... That's the only one I think don't come off. Aggravated assault or something like, and they see where, okay, this guy trying to apply for, like in my case, mm. I had weed on my racket. Mm -hmm. I lock up for smoking weed. Mm -hmm. So um, that was on my racket. Mm -hmm. I took it to certain places. They'd be like, listen, I know you're a good captain. I heard a lot about you. You had a lot of good, you know. But you got his racket. References got, and everything. This, this is the only dark side. It's here. a gangsta so company, company have policy. Clean racket. So oh, me and my aunt went and meet this guy. And he's like, yo, my nephew trying to get a job. I mean, he never had no problems with the law ever since this incident. Mm -hmm. and this, should this be? something that he has to hold over his head for the rest of his life. I mean, he won't be able to work in his own country because of this. And I mean, what, what do you all expect him to do, to do if he can't have a job? That's yeah. ridiculous. So that, that guilt trip trying to kind of play on them. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of see where, okay, maybe this could be the case where a lot of young juveniles getting caught up in the system because mm -hmm. of one little misdemeanor. A small narcotic. Yeah, so mm -hmm. they start, just like what Biden started doing the other Exactly. Thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. worried about that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, beneficial to be able to legalize to something work. and then have people serving felony sentences for the thing you legalize. Exactly. You're kind of contradicting both. Exactly. And it's Same kind of as in the country of Turks and Caicos. How do you do your time for the crime and you come out of jail and still get penalized for it? Well, not just that. He's a Turks and Caicos out Exactly. You can't just this send happens. him to go get a job. No food, no one's going to hire this, hire him with this on the record. There has to be some kind of program. There's not even like a drug treatment program where they say you do this for six months and we'll take it off. No, they have a program. So the program is this, this is, this is, and I know this because I had to go through the long ropes. Mm -hmm. And part of why we can't get no resolution on this is our own people. So in the program, it's called the Rehabilitation of Offenders Bill. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you do a crime and it's non-custodial, it takes two years for your record to clean. But you got to chase them up to clean it. So that was your case? If you, the thing is, you, you, you can't get in no trouble or you can't be in the law hand during that period. You're trying to get... Yeah, it's a two years. Patient period. Yeah, like a clean yeah. slate for like two, three years. So how do you get a so, job while this two years is going on? You don't. The thing so is, how do I be good with no money? But like, like you would just have to deal people. with it until the racket is clean. Like certain jobs don't even care about a racket, which kind of made way for a few people along the way. Like there are like certain bars and restaurants that instantly need a bartender. They don't care if you had a racket. Like, Let's reverse a little bit on that, though, Rice. Like. So but basically, our country is telling us that hey, no matter what capacity you have mentally, so long as you have a criminal charge on your racket, man, you gotta take what you could get. But not just take you yeah, but you know what I said? He had to go look at bars. And so now I got to yeah. be around alcohol. Uh, like, the things you're telling me to stay and away from, I got to be around. What I was find the jobs that didn't care much about the racket, and that's when I start to, like, tap into those. Now, they ain't paying much because sometimes some of them jobs involve, like, okay, you being uh, a bus boy cleaning up after the service. Uh -huh. Or it involved washing dishes or some mediocre job, you know? And so it's humbling that. But when yeah. I saw where my level was, I was like, the hell with this. The beach got to work because there's more money out there versus all this. I'd rather embarrass myself for more money out here than do <laughs> Half the beach and half the dudes in the boating game got a racket because that's what they kind of push us to. That's mm -hmm. all that's left. Yeah. For you to be a crew member on a boat or a captain, you could be a killer just come out of prison. If you're good enough to drive that boat or whatever, they'll hire you. You don't even need a they racket. They push boat. everyone there. Excursion companies. But there are some people today that just got boats, need staff, if you're looking to make a change and you got a dirty racket, listen, don't do, that's how my job is. And if you're looking for this and I can help you, I can give you a good salary. I'll take you on. I don't care about a racket. You know, that's crazy. how a lot of people got by. But what if, me. What if you were a specialist at something? What if you, like you, the way you are with the boat captain, what if it was another field that didn't hire people with a criminal record, then what would you do? You just wouldn't be able to do that one thing you're good at? Bro, I have Honestly, a criminal record is, with a degree. You, it, it, that's that that's where a lot of people, that they don't realize today, <laughs> that, don't mean none. that criminal record stopped a lot of people from progress, that kind along the way. Like, that's crazy. Like, yeah. It is. But I, as simple as traveling. So <laughs> that's true, the visa. Said, what if you don't have that British passport or ask the simplest traveling right now to the United States, you have a criminal record. No, but back to what I was saying earlier. One of the problems is they dirty the record and they don't go do the compliance. To you them. have to chase them down. Yes, you chasing them up. To the point where I can remember one time vividly, this is a true story. 
My record must be was clean four years ago. I pull up to the AG herself. I tell her about this situation that I'm having. She tells me, oh man, you should have been thinking about that when you was young, creating all these problems, man. You, 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 you don't think about that? But I can sort you out next week when I come. We in 2022, next week can you reach yet. You know what I had to do? I went to the deputy AG, a foreigner, a white man, a criminal case lawyer, an ex-criminal case lawyer. This is why he told me that he sympathized with my plea and my situation. He said, man, I used to support the bad guys in court. I was a criminal lawyer. And alleged bad guys. Al alleged bad guys, <laughs> but that's how he dropped it, right? So I, 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 I outlined this guy that I was emailing the police force for like five years straight with proof showing them. And every time, every time, I wouldn't even call the police names who do it. I know vividly who do it, but I wouldn't call their names. But every time without fail, they send me a dirty record, send me a dirty record, send me a dirty record, and make me pay to get the new ones. Every time, dirty records over again. Make me pay over and over, pay, 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 pay. So this is what our government does on purpose. Mm. It's only when I went to the deputy attorney general, white man, who called Trevor Botting, another white man, and my record was clean that same day. Oh, so, so you owe Colin and you owe Trevor? Yes. Okay. I do owe this to Mr. Trevor Button and Mr. Mike. And when we speak about this. Who's the first person to actually agree with Mr. Now, Colin when we when we when we speaking about this topic right here, he didn't even think twice mm. on cleaning it. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say it's because the authority or request or suggestion or recommendation came from Mr. Michael. I saying it because somebody with authority requested. That's the same thing the Attorney General could have done for me, and that was a local. Mm -hmm. So one of our other problems in this country is our own people, bro, when we uh, really To with be honest, you, you guys don't owe either one of those commissioners. That was no. the right thing that should have been done. Someone should Oh, it should have been done four years ago. So one ago. of the reasons why I didn't get it done four years ago, because I was in the email demanding, like, yo, you're supposed to clean this kind of now. Yeah. <laughs> you got to know somebody. Who you and know it, more than what you know, <laughs> when, I went, when I went there alone, it didn't happen for me. Yeah, they I had to take with somebody you. who had to make a call oh. to a friend. And my uncle my Dan take me. With me. And Dan mm. had to plead a case for me. And yes. then all of a sudden, the guys look at me and like, okay, yes. how long has he been in? You know, he yes. Never been in jail? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, we'll yes. Take it down for my uncle Ben took me, bro. That was how I got a reserve as well. Because Mr. Michael didn't know me. He knew my uncle. Mm. And this was the mutualness that even bring me to his desk. Need somebody to vouch for you. Give yeah, me the opportunity. Somebody, somebody good character. Yeah. Let him, clean record let, him, so. let him see the, the emails back and forth. Like, literally, like, mm. what? Your record was clean four years ago, and you just, and you trying to get it clean now, and they still don't want to do it? So mm. we need a department that has cleaned the guys' records, man. Without them having to come on. Specific answer, for uh, Before you clean the record, they got to right? want it. No, they don't have to want it. You already set a policy that states no, not, it has to be clean on this not, date. I'm so not, when that date come, clean the record, man. I'm not, no, saying, not, I'm not saying they have to want it. I'm saying, not next right, extra. what I've realized, the few people that I know that have went to jail, when they go, they come out worse. I was a repeat offender. That right? is, no, but no. I, let me finish. You, you can't argue with Jeffrey's no, point, no, man. We don't do reform. Agreed. We don't do reform. Agreed. We just hold you. Yeah. First of all, I'm big on prevent. I don't want people to go to jail, first of all. If we could prevent it, that's good. But if they go to jail, how do we assist them in becoming better when they come out? Because I know a few people, it's like they go, they brag, and then this person try to outdo them. All right, but hold on. Ain't the jail itself supposed to have like a rehabilitation kind no. of within? No. <sighs> Let's be real. So, no. I mean, because based on, like, like I ain't never been no. in America jail, but mm. I've seen, like, episodes and, like, how jail really mm. is. No. They got they're libraries there. They got, like, yeah. con like consultants. They got, like, uh, sessions no. where people could join. Like, they even got, like, a little church. On yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah, you know, could go get your kind of, faith uh, in, yeah. The average mind, yeah. a little busy, or bring it towards and, some positivity. they Speak. have a lot of time in there. So if you put you have towards time. positivity, even if you... Like I saw in Brazil where they took off time if you read a book and you gave a summary on it. Well, they take time off your mandatory. Right? So, so if you did something like that, because you have to remember the real problem is the mind. Mm -hmm. Until we target the mind and change how people think, 
Mm. Well, I spoke about that earlier. Like, like you got to get into the syllabus for that to change mindset in this nation. The dude said the best team in jail is a basketball court in the gym. That's true. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's true. Oh, but it's, it's so funny you mentioned that. I saw this film. I was watching it. There was this football player that was falsely accused, and then he was in prison for like six, seven years before he came out of parole, and they eventually overturned his conviction. It was a sex crime, so he had oh. to go on that list where he couldn't be near schools and playground so he literally had to fight this even after he came out of prison and he always talked about this one guy in prison that gave him this this quote that changed his life and he was talking about how the benefits of prison he's like you have an advantage that nobody else that's free has. you have no distractions everybody else in the world they get distracted they have their cell phones they got this one calling them messing this one asking them anything they got television he said you have none of that you literally have total control over everything you put inside you and everything you put out how you serve this time will be a direct reflection of, of how you use that and i genuinely feel that's an approach we should take when it comes to reforming our prisoners we're really just holding them we're really just holding them for the time you serve and then sending you back out with no assimilation skills. You put me in a cage, I gotta learn to live in a cage. Then you put me back in society. Nobody's teaching me how to learn to live in because society again. Jail, is, jail alone is be the lesson. Like, okay, if he go for five years, maybe he'll come back and be a better man. How about trying to grow that man's mind to something different? Absolutely. That time frame. The, you, a, a prisoner is a perfect student, you know. If you're, the if student's you're, got iPads and distractions. This guy's in prison. He has no man. distractions. He's the best learner you'll ever have. So I know consciously. Too, well, in real life today, got degrees. In yeah, of course. Because you know, you're right. No distractions. on what you ship your mind to. And, and you got more time on your hand. You know you got to be here for you, 10 years. You know what I'm distracting you. Even if they do it for the wrong reason. Let's say, all right, I'm going to play like... I read this book. Just to get a to do get sentence. A, it could it it stick. Of course. You get an A in this class. for the wrong reason. But some parts of it do. Yeah. But no, even the grades, you, you, in mandatory classes, you get an A in a class based on your performance, your attendance, all these things. You get reduced sentences. We're a small enough country where we can implement these kind of things. Because, but I, I, I real our country don't lean enough on cognitivity and how people think or is it because or, the minority is the majority in the prison no is it, minority it's, is it's, the majority in our community yeah but we got a we got a we got a problem <laughs> of overlooking root causes in this nation and then making excuses depending on who the person is right so when we speak about incarceration right now and we speak about why we have so much repeated offenders we need to look at culturally or historically what goes on in our society would make guys comfortable in prison when you're in primary school bro we have segments where there's a period a bell rings another period and a bell rings the same thing happens in prison bro and and you would wonder why some people are so comfortable with prison because it's subconsciously installed in their brains from a child level and then when they go and get incarcerated, I know some guys, they've been going to prison for maybe, I can't even say when, and they're young. They're just as young as us, mm. but they still in and out of prison, in and out of prison, in and out of prison. They feel, they feel institutionalized. They feel like this is home. This is where they feel most comfortable at. That's a dangerous, dangerous thing. All right, fellas, so we're gonna close shortly. I wanna give each of you just a short minute, 30 seconds, two minutes to, not only talk about yourself, but in, in what we're doing here and the kind of changes you want to see in terms of cases. I want, to also, I want you guys to be able to also use this platform, like anything you're working on, what can we expect next from you? I want you guys to take advantage of this because I see you guys as major success stories as part of this discussion. Yeah. Um, by promoting yourself where you are and your brand, I think it's gonna inspire a lot of other young guys that might've been in situations that you guys were in. I mean, you all represent complete contrasting backgrounds. So let's not just focus on, hey, young men, you need to do this. Talk about what you have going on, what we can expect from you, and, and just we can be a mo how you guys are more of a motivation to them by being your brand. So we'll start with you, Jeffrey. Just, just tell us a little bit of what we can expect from you next, buddy. Well, next for me, I'm trying to expand my transportation business and while giving back. Um, so get another car, hopefully get another plate. Um, and continue to give back. I, my motto is be the good you would like to see. 
So when I was growing up, I didn't have much mentors. I tried to mentor. So everything I didn't get, that's what I try to do, right? And that's why I even have my shirt on today. Mm. I'm a rotor actor, you know? We do good in the community. There's Interact. There's the youth center as well that does brilliant jobs. There's places where people want to help you. We are out here, you know? And though it may seem bad, though there's bad people here, but there's a lot of great people here. And the people who are, who are in the high places do not look at us as competition. We're the continuation, right? This is a relay. Mm -hmm. No one's gonna be here forever. And I think that's one of the biggest problems, but I'm not just saying it, I'm living it. I try to be a mentor and I try to do good, but I'm not perfect. So that's my little story. All right, let's go Cap. Hey, what's up guys? Captain Rice here. Most of you know me, or should I say everybody know me. And I'd just like to say I wasn't always the brightest. I wasn't always the best. I wasn't, like I said, I was always dim as the worst. But I think it's high time that most of us wake up and recognize that God-given gift and that potential that's buried deep within us. You know, you could be in a position right now or you could be in a situation right now where you feel like, you know, the world against you or, or as I said before, you reach your bottom. But it doesn't mean it's too late. You know, you don't have to always stray on that negativity. You know, look around you. You know, look anywhere but down. You know, mm -hmm. try looking up for a change. Mm -hmm. See what you could work, make work for you, you know, and more positive aspects of life. Take, for instance, me being from a beach bum, graduated to a captain. One day, I'd like to own my own company. I'm going to own my own company. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have Captain Rice Charters or give it some other catchy name along the way. I already see my start. I've been through it, and now I'm trying to reach towards my finish. It didn't take me going to Harvard University or having some major degree. All it took was just common sense and just waking up towards reality. We don't lose a lot. And we ain't trying to lose no more. It's time for young people to wake up. You know, take your stand, take your place in this country. You know, look around you. We have some of the, well, I, I always say we live in the best country in the world. <laughs> I but agree. If mm -hmm. you was on a beach somewhere in Haiti, Dominican Republic, then people want you to get permit and things to mm -hmm. go get a license and this and that. Mm -hmm. You live within boundaries and how to make money. Okay? There are some people I see come from good chefs, come from good carpenters, come from good you know, both people that, that actually have these things within them. I never had these things, but guess what? It didn't take me much to develop it. I came from a boat in town. I knew the life, and I just took that with me and make it work for me. The thing I want to leave with everybody else, uh, sorry, the thing I want to leave with everybody is be smart, be wise. Don't worry about people. You know, because I'm pretty sure I ain't always the best being said about me. Life is about growing. You could be 80 years old, still learning, and still growing. Just facts. Okay? Facts. When I reach my bottom, that's when I start looking up. Because I didn't have nowhere else to look. And I urge everybody to do the same. And sometimes, as I said before on, on the radio, when you see a person come to you and try to bring you up to speed, it ain't always you must hate them or show hate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that could be a brother that's used to seeing positivity in you, mm -hmm. you know? So when they say, hey, listen, man, you know you ain't supposed to be doing that. Or, hey, man, listen, come here, come here, come here. You know better than that. You don't throw hate right away, man, because that's a brother right there mm -hmm. that's actually pulling you aside and showing you better. And I have plenty of that. Now, a lot of us is true. Yeah, man, listen, I don't want nobody to run my life. Or listen, you don't, don't tell me what to do. That ain't the way, because look where that got us. Yeah. It ain't getting us no better. Look, look, where we, look, look what we become. <laughs> we got to do better, and we got to warm better. And that start with us, okay? Facts. It starts with us. Facts. The time is now. Facts. That's where we're going. Well, Turks and Caicos, particularly young people, I would say stay busy. If, if, if anyone wanted to know my secret of staying out of problems, I was staying busy. I, I, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've owned several business. I've always been trying something different. I always been encouraging younger children, younger youth around me. And if you around me, 
is I know some guys on the beach in Grand Talk right now can vouch that I turned them to businessmen. They was hustlers when I met them, but I turned them to businessmen. I make them go get their license. I make them go and structure themselves. Why? Because I know that as long as you occupy doing something, particularly that's something that's going to bring profit, it's positive. And anytime something is positive, you're always heading in the right direction. So stay busy. Stay busy. Love TCI. That's all I know. Oh, yeah. Don't care. Don't let the odds go against you. <laughs> right. So this, is, this has been an amazing cast. I think we always talk about how there's um, a disconnect between the, the people that are making the decisions and the, the people that is directly impacting. So today you heard from three gentlemen that definitely represent a vast amount of our society, people that we really need to listen to. And I think these guys are a true depiction of how there's so many different paths to success. It's not always going to be easy. There's, it's not going to be the same for me as it, as it is for you. But these guys have taken difficult situations and turned it into the Turks and Caicos dream. I mean, they, they get to be the best depiction of, of what we have to represent here. And I couldn't be more proud of you guys as individuals, not only for what you've done, but to take this up to talk about your stories. Because a lot of people, you know, they're comfortable bragging mm -hmm. about where they are, but they don't talk about how they got there. But and I think you guys doing tonight, that. Boy, make me remember so much. Oh, it's, it's just going to inspire more young men that yeah. are at various stages of where you guys are coming from, right? So those that might be on the verge of achieving success, but those who might be in the mud right now. Yeah. And they understand that, you know, just because you're in this position right now, as long as you got the right attitude, the right energy, I mean, you can always bounce back and mm -hmm. do great things. And I think we need more platforms like this. So I'd like to thank Open Thought Communication, the guys behind the camera. Thank you so much. I mean, we look forward to doing more programs like this. But I feel rejuvenated and excited to know that someday I'm not going to be here, but my kids are going to grow up in a community where guys like this have influence. Because I know Turks and Caicos is going to be great in great hands if we continue to promote and provide platforms for individuals like this. And hopefully we can get more. This isn't the minority. We've got more young guys out there that have achieved success or on mm -hmm. the verge of achieving and success. Brighter people so, than us. Absolutely, man. I mean, Captain yes. Wright said, not the brightest, not yeah. the smartest, but get it. We got it out the mud. He yeah. got it. So we need to provide more platforms like this for young guys. So I'm grateful for you guys doing this today. I'm grateful I was um, a part of it. And um, this was You Think Up. And again, thank you so much for Open Thought Communication for putting this together. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Turks and Caicos. Stay blessed. Yeah. You know gangsta ain't killing. Gangsters taking care of your children. Gangsters loving each other. Gangsters respecting our women. Yeah.